Scopes, what are they? How do they work? And why should you use them? We're gonna be demonstrating how scopes work in Resolve, but if you are a Premiere or a Final Cut or an Avid user, don't worry. The principles that we're gonna be discussing are relevant no matter how many times I twist in my chair. Start over. The principles that we're gonna be going over are relevant no matter what NLE that you're working with. So now I'm gonna hand things over to our resident color guru, Leon, and he's gonna show you the ropes. By the way, new studio, what do you think? Scopes are tools that allow you to analyze your images. Resolve can display different kinds of scopes. If you click on the drop down button next to where it says waveform, you'll see the different kinds of scopes that Resolve can display. To keep things simple, in this lesson, we're gonna focus on understanding how the waveform and vector scope work. We'll start with the waveform. Before we go any further, I just wanna take a moment to talk about some technical terms that you're gonna hear me using a lot. How do we describe an image? Let's put to one side the abstract qualities of an image like composition for one moment. There are two key principles of an image visually, brightness and color. When it comes to brightness, sometimes you might hear me using the words luminance or exposure. So please forgive me if I use them. And another word for color is chroma. Different words, they mean the same thing essentially as regards what we're doing. So how do you describe an image's brightness? Well, an image could be bright or it could be dark. And you can describe the image as a whole, or you can get specific and describe particular parts of an image. We call the dark parts of an image, the shadows. We call the bright parts of the image, the highlights. And the bits in between, we call midtones. Shadows, midtones, and highlights. You're gonna hear me use those words a lot. How do we describe the color of an image? Well, we can talk about a color's hue, the shade of color that it is. Is it red, yellow, or orange? And we can talk about the saturation of that color. How intense is that color? How orange is that orange? So remember, brightness and color, and shadows, midtones, and highlights. And sometimes when I talk about colors, you're gonna hear me talking about their hue, and their saturation. Let's carry on. Next to that drop down menu is the settings button. This allows you to customize the waveform. At the moment, my waveform is showing me the luminosity or the brightness of the image. I've also got this colorize checkbox turned on. But ordinarily, the waveform would just be white against a black screen. I like having color eyes turned on because it makes it easier to read my waveform. I can identify which parts of the image I'm looking at in the waveform based on their color. For example, this green lump here on the right is the green cup in the image. You can see traces of the blue and the orange lights on the arms of our editor as well. A waveform is kind of like a graph that shows you how brightness or tonality is distributed throughout the image. Traces at the bottom of that graph represent parts of the image that are dark. Traces at the top of the graph represent parts of the image that are bright. Even better, my favorite thing about a waveform, not only does it show me the tonality of the image, but it helps me to understand where those tones are in the image. To demonstrate that, I've created a node with a mask on that darkens the image in the middle. I want to use it to demonstrate how a waveform works. If I move that dark blob from left to right, you can see it moving left to right in our waveform. So depending on where a trace is horizontally in this graph, that reflects where you'll find those tones in our actual image. I'm done with this mask, so I'm just gonna turn it off by disabling that node. Waveforms are great tools for helping us to ensure that our image is exposed correctly and is nicely balanced. In general, a good image will be balanced tonally. In other words, it'll have a little bit of shadow, a little bit of highlights, and a nice even spread of midtones. This image is a great example. You can see that there's a teeny bit of shadow, a teeny bit of highlight, and the rest of the tones in the image are spread evenly. But I said in general though, this rule doesn't work for every kind of image. For example, in our next shot, this is in a bright room you can see that the waveform is biased towards the highlights. 
And in the next image, which is in a dark room, you can see that the waveform is biased towards the shadows. Our scopes are technical tools, but they need to be interpreted creatively. It's important that you understand what kind of an image that you're producing. When you understand the kind of image that you're producing, then you'll know how to interpret the waveform and adjust the image accordingly. Not only can waveforms be used to understand whether an image is correctly exposed, they can also be used to help us understand how contrasty the image is. In general, when an image is considered contrasty, it means the image has bright parts and dark parts in it, and there's a very quick transition between the two. For example, a black and white checkerboard is considered to be contrasty. This image is contrasty. You've got all of those bright clips against that dark black timeline. Well, we can see this in our waveform. There are lots of highlights in the image. There are lots of shadows in the image too. While there are some midtones in the middle, you can see that the image is predominantly either bright or dark. In fact, as I increase the contrast of the image, you can see this effect being exaggerated. And as I decrease the image's contrast, you can see those highlights and those shadows moving back towards the middle of the image. I'll just reset that contrast control. Not only do our scopes help us to understand the images that have been delivered to us from production, but they can also aid us when we're making adjustments to the image. I'm gonna go back to this bright shot of Brian sitting at the coffee table. In our waveform, this very top line here represents the brightest value that our image can store. And this bottom line here, zero, represents the darkest value that our image can store. Simply put, you can't make something brighter than white and you can't make something darker than black. If we manipulate our image and push parts brighter than white or darker than black, something called clipping or crushing occurs. Any tonality or detail in that part of the image will be destroyed. And this is something we want to avoid because it looks pretty terrible. Let me demonstrate what that looks like. If I increase the gain of this image, as I make it brighter and brighter and brighter, you'll see the trace disappearing off the top of the scope. When I do this, I'm clipping my image. In those parts of the image that I have pushed to be brighter than white, you can see that there is no longer any detail or tonality. They're just washed out white parts of the image. It doesn't look very good. Let me undo that. Let me demonstrate the opposite when we try to make stuff darker than black. I'm gonna manipulate my lift control here to do that. As you can see, all of my dark values have been crushed and bunched up around this zero line here. It has the same effect on the image. I lose tonality, texture, and detail in those parts of the image that I have tried to push blacker than black. Again, this makes my image look terrible. Well, when we're adjusting our image to redistribute or change its tonality, the waveform is an incredibly powerful tool for making sure that we're not making destructive changes to our image. I can make the shadows in this image a little bit more punchy by dragging the lift down but while I'm doing that, I'm gonna keep an eye on my waveform to make sure that I'm not crushing my blacks. We've spent time learning how to use the waveform in Resolve. I'd now like to show you another one of the scopes available, the vector scope. Whereas the waveform is really good for analyzing the exposure of an image, it tells us almost nothing about the colors in the image. On the other hand, the vector scope is terrible for reading the exposure of an image. Instead, it focuses on giving us information about the colors in an image. This circle represents all the colors that our image is capable of displaying. It follows the same pattern as the color wheels that you see over here. You also get a nice reminder of how the colors are laid out in this scope thanks to these red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta targets that are drawn onto the scope. Colors in the image are indicated by a trace that reaches out from the middle towards where that color would be plotted if this were a giant color wheel. Let's switch to the clip that shows a close-up of the timeline. This image makes it a lot more obvious how a scope works. You can see that this image contains pinks and lilacs, some yellows and some blue. You can see those colors here drawn in our scope, the pinks, the lilacs, the yellows and the blue. The distance that the trace travels from the center of the scope indicates how saturated or how intense that color is. Looking at this scope, you can see that the pink 
is one of the most saturated colors that we have on the screen. If I manipulate the saturation of the image, you'll see the trace getting larger as I increase saturation and smaller as I decrease saturation. I'll reset that control. Let's look at another image, this dark studio shot. Thanks to the lighting in this studio, the image has a very blue tone to it. You can see that shown in the vector scope. The entire trace is biased towards blue. If I manipulate the image by adding a color hue with the offset wheel, you'll see the trace on the scope move correspondingly. I'll reset that change that I just made. So, why are scopes so valuable to a colorist? Viewing images on a monitor can be an incredibly subjective experience. Depending on our viewing environment or the quality of the equipment, we will see and perceive the image differently. If I turn up the brightness on my computer monitor and go grade a load of images, I'm going to compensate for that bright monitor by making my images too dark. Or conversely, if I turn the brightness down on my monitor, then I'm going to overcompensate when I grade those images and make them too bright. Well, scopes allow us to analyze and to define an image objectively. We can put all that subjectivity to one side. But remember, scopes aren't the whole story. We need to understand the context of the image in order to be able to read our scopes properly. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. Hey there, for tons more free editing training, head over to our website at filmeditingpro.com slash free training. Here you can download free editing guides along with high quality video training courses created by our team of professional Hollywood editors. Our tutorials cover a wide range of editing topics like cutting awesome movie trailers, editing action scenes, how to work with music and sound design, and a lot more. All of these free guides and videos are available at filmeditingpro.com slash free training. I'll see you next time.